The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. How you doing everyone? This is Eric R. Music and this is the Truth About Being an Artist series. Episode 10, You Are the Cure. Now since my last video, we've seen a spike in coronavirus cases. Currently, New York is one of the hotspots in the country and it's utterly frightening to see the positive test results and deaths being counted in the news. It's soul crushing to see this virus escalate because it only heightens the helplessness we all feel when we sit confined in our homes, glued to the grim news reports that promise no relief. However, the more insidious crisis befalling all of us in the mire of this isolation is the fear of the unknown. The panic-driven warnings and lockdowns render all of us impotent and scared. Fear is now animating us, controlling us, and whipping us into a frenzy of desperation. We now look back on the recent past as a miraculous time full of hope and promise. Just weeks before we were free, we had lives and the ability to master our own choices. But now we are ruled by something unseen. We are at the mercy of an invisible tyrant that wants to control our future. And its weapon of choice is fear. Until a few weeks ago, many of us were thriving and enjoying the benefits of a humming economy. The last thing we expected to encounter was a quick and frightening halt to our good fortune. This quick turn of events coupled with the depressing nature of social distancing is mind-numbing. The abrupt halt to our schedule was at first exciting. We no longer were at the mercy of school and activities. The children were thrilled to have a break from school and my wife was looking forward to having extra time to finish her latest novel. But soon the thrill wore off and everybody became bored and edgy. And sadly, my wife found that she couldn't write. She's now distracted by the worries of our children, the news of an uncertain future. And just like that, in a matter of days, the void was no longer enticing. It was suffocating. Creativity is halted by fear and further spoiled by panic. But if I'm being honest, this, this sort of pressure cooker situation is very familiar to me. You don't need a worldwide pandemic to exert this kind of stress that our minds are capable of producing. Not too long ago, during the recent recession, for several long, tiresome years I struggled, and in that struggle, I felt alone. I felt like the entire world was doing well, and for some reason, I couldn't succeed no matter how hard I worked. Days turned into weeks, and then months, and even years. The feeling of failure ate away at me until I wasn't producing at all. The lack of success and the mounting failure rendered me powerless and allowed all the negativity to wash over me. For a brief moment, I conceded and wallowed in my own misery. Feeling angry and spiteful, I almost gave up. I was sick of the game and the psychological warfare. But deep inside, the stubborn nonconformist in me wouldn't allow for a weak surrender. I chose to feed that voice, and fortunately, it reaped great results. For that brief time, I yielded. I allowed fear to run my life and govern me. The more I didn't create, the deeper I slipped into a depressing vacuum. I was left with nothing to sell, and whatever future I had left was becoming dire. So I empathize with your pain, your confusion, your frustration. I acknowledge your fears, and I understand your panic. I've been there. I'm battle-tested. When my wife came to me upset, I hugged her. I gave her this advice. Relax. You can't control the present, but you can define your future. I encourage her to turn off the news and create. I reminded her that faith and hope is the antidote to fear, that it's the medicine we need to combat the virus of helplessness. I advised her to funnel all her anguish into her work and allow her creativity to circumvent the fear. An artist is always at their best when they're lost in their own self-created world. If you think you're the first to deal with the effects of fear and isolation, you'd be wrong. Some of the greatest artistic masterpieces in the world have been created during depressing times. Shakespeare wrote King Lear in 1603 when another plague ravaged all of London following the death of Queen Elizabeth. Over 30,000 people died in the city of London alone, and yet he turned that misery into one of the greatest literary masterpieces. Victor Hugo suffered the ramifications of exile in 1851. It left him feeling detached from all he held dear. Rather than succumb to the effects of this depression, he dusted off an old project that he was putting off for some time, and he completed Les Miserables. 
My favorite example of overcoming the hopelessness of exile and isolation is Dante Alighieri. Dante was banished from his beloved Florence in the 1300s. It wasn't until his banishment that he began to work on his Divine Comedy. Between 1308 and 1321, he wrote the three sections of the poem, the Inferno, the Purgatorio, and the Paradiso. In many ways, his journey through the Divine Comedy echoes the struggles he faced during his banishment. He literally went through hell to get to heaven. This is a very personal story for me, and in many ways it echoes the struggles I've had my entire career. Now let these great authors and playwrights serve as an excellent example of how to transcend a negativity that's swirling all around us. Refuse to give in to its temptations. Instead, harness its creative power and wield it. Envelop yourself in the magic of the inner muse and let the world and all its chaos slip away. This crisis will end and we will be all the better from what we learned about ourselves and the great things we created during our darkest days. My very best to you and your families during this time. If you're an artist, you absolutely need a website to have a successful career. Social media is only a small part of what it takes to run a professional art business. An artist needs a website, period. If you don't believe me then, look at the over 12,000 artists who use FASO for their websites. I've personally built my own website since 1998, and in 2018, I moved over to FASO, and I could not be happier. Right now, FASO is offering an amazing FASO Gold Plan for only $50 for your first year. To make this even better, this plan includes the FASO support team building your artist website for free. So even if you have no experience in web design, you have no excuse. After your first year, you can renew your website at the normal yearly price. You could switch to another plan, you can go month to month, or you can cancel your membership altogether. How great is that? There has never been a better time to get a website you need to succeed. Go where all the successful artists go, and the place that I'm very happy to be. Get your FASO website today. Click the link in the description below to take advantage of this awesome special.